Oklahoma managed to roll Kansas. We're going to talk about what was good and what was awful. And all that's coming up after the bumper. What do you mean oh. you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ. What's up, kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always OU-related, college football-related, sports-related. We have a good time. And in a month that has already started with a loss for a ranked opponent, Central Florida, say hi to Cincy. It didn't look great for Oklahoma to start the game against Kansas. They went down 7-0 to zero to the Jayhawks on the road. Now, I understand that some of you are like, yo, weather delay, and it's cold. And I'm going, it's Kansas, all right? Look, Carter Stanley went 6-7 for 65 yards with a TD to start the game, and you also had three third-down conversions. And for perspective here, Oklahoma had held teams to 20%, less than 20%, 19.6% on third down, and had been aggressively awesome in third and long situations. And all of a sudden, you not just had the defense out of sync, you had the offense out of sync. Didn't know what Jalen Hurts was thinking about or looking at. He tried to throw a pick six. Those of you that say that he didn't, watch the tape. He tried to throw that into the arms of a Jayhawk defender. That dude dropped the ball. You end up getting a 21-7 to lead, but anybody who watched the game is going, throw this half in the trash because you managed to turn a first and goal from the 17, which was really odd because Nick Basquin had the wide receiver pass to Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts got it to the 7. You got the holding penalty after the reception to move you back to the 17. So you got first and goal from the 17, which is squarely to begin with. And then Lincoln Riley did the effing Lincoln Riley thing and called another trick play. Try to call what looked like a reverse to CeeDee Lamb. CeeDee Lamb is going to get caught 20 yards deep behind the line and decide to pitch it backward to Jalen Hurts. And all of this led to Oklahoma having third and goal from its from the KU 48. Almost the OU 48. And yet, Reeves Munchau punting from the KU 44. This was just not a very fun first half for anybody that watched it. Like, I felt bad for us watching the game, let alone Oklahoma's offense and defense. And you had a scare there where Kenneth Murray Jr. had to come off the field with what looked like a left ankle injury. He came back on. He finished strong. But it also highlights just how impactful he is for this defense because they look lost when he's not on the field, particularly at linebacker. Brian Meade missed some plays. He missed bringing Puka Williams Jr. at down, who had another outstanding game against Oklahoma. In the first half alone, he had 16 carries for 98 yards, right? Which is ridiculous when you think about he had 252 yards on 17 carries, or 15 carries, excuse me, last year. And it didn't look like Oklahoma was really concerned with putting this game away once that got up 42-7. to Because you call the dogs up, cool, and you want to get the puppies some play. But Tanner Mordecai comes out and doesn't know what the play clock reads. You're getting stupid penalty after stupid penalty. I mean, Oklahoma is nearly last in penalties when we're talking about going into this game. And they didn't do themselves any favors. I mean, this, this team needs to get disciplined in a very quick manner. And I understand you're playing this game without Kennedy Brooks and without either of your bookends at tackle. Both Adrian Ely and Eric Swenson were out for this game. But it shouldn't be that big a deal. You start R.J. Proctor at left tackle, who knows what he's doing. Marquise Hayes at left guard, Creed Humphrey at center, and then Bray Walker at right guard and move Tyrese Robinson out to right tackle. But Tyrese Robinson did not look comfortable. He did not look good at right tackle against a Kansas defense. I have to underscore that. And then going into the half, Oklahoma had just 24 yards rushing. Now, what did Lincoln Riley do coming out? He said, we're going to run the ball. And he gave Jalen Hurts every opportunity to take this game over, and he did, right? So you get the early points in the third quarter to extend it to 28-7. to seven. You get 28 unanswered. You get basically 42 unanswered before you start just leaking points here, and your defense decides not to finish strong. And you also just you, you hurt yourself, all right? Because Justin Broyles had a pick. It was his. And then you get the penalty. So you give the ball back to Kansas, and Carter Stanley drops a dime to get them their second touchdown of the game. So that's like a 14-point swing where I'm sitting, right? And it's not a takeaway, which is one of the things that's being stressed, not just by Grinch or the defense, but by fans, because we're all bought into this 
24 takeaways for your defense means nine wins for Oklahoma. Never mind that Oklahoma is supposed to win 11, 12 games every single year. But also, you're talking about a bunch of guys on the defense that still are figuring it out. I mean, Neville Gallimore is having his most outstanding season of his career, and that's great. Ronnie Perkins is a future pro. Kenneth Murray Jr., we've been talking about in a very good and positive way all year long. But Parnell Motley looked like he might have got a little bit exposed, right? Just a little bit overzealous with his hands, but you'll take that. Jaden Davis had his first really true freshman game. Got into a scuffle, but I'll take that. That's a dude expressing himself, understanding that he has some stuff at his neck. You want to get that dialed back, but you'd rather see it than not. You want to tell somebody to back off. You don't want to have to push him on. Delarian Turner Yale still hadn't figured it out. He is a linebacker playing safety, which is great if you were asked to play like a linebacker, but he's not. He's asked to play like a safety. You had a couple opportunities to get some picks. You had a couple opportunities to force some fumbles. You didn't do that against this Kansas offense. You're also really still trying to figure out just what it means to finish the game. I thought we had this figured out against Texas Tech when you're holding them to 1 of 14 on third down, giving up just 16 total points. But you give up more to a Kansas team that everybody expects to finish at the bottom of this roster. I mean, a roster of this league. I'm frustrated over here because I'm looking at Oklahoma State. What are you doing? What, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, all right, we can talk about Oklahoma State in another date, but I'm looking down. Spencer Sanders throws a pick. What are you, what are you doing? You're down 45-35 to a Texas Tech team. Jet Duffy's throw for over 400 yards against you. I, it's a squirrely October Saturday, all right? And for Oklahoma to come out with a W and a demonstrative W is a very cool thing for the Sooners, all right? It's really kind of outstanding when you think about all the things that have happened and all the things that could transpire. You went into this weekend with 18 undefeated teams, right? A bunch of those teams, I think nine of them, have to play each other. And ahead of the Red River rivalry, the toughest game on Oklahoma's schedule against Texas, you want to go in that game undefeated. You want to be able to get set for it. And maybe this is what you need. Maybe the silver lining here is that you get a wake-up call. You get an understanding that you're not just going to be able to roll everybody in this league. And if you continue to play the way that you're playing against a better football team, be it Texas Christian, Iowa State, or Texas, you're liable to get beat. And I think that's good. You're going to go into film review. Alex Grinch is going to rip his defense a new booty hole. Bill Beatonbow is going to rip his offensive line a new booty hole. And then Lincoln Riley is going to have his way with the offense. And maybe they'll get their come-to-Jesus meeting and they'll be ready to set and go against a Texas team that wants every bit of them after taking a seven-point loss to LSU to prove to everybody they deserve to be in the conversation for the college football playoff, not unlike Oklahoma is right now. All right, that's it for me. That was just-